This is Redbeard, and on this adventure, I'll discuss why it's been so long since I've posted any other adventures. My last adventure was posted about camping uh, back in October. And here it is, the end of February. So why the delay? Why the hiatus? Uh, well, uh, about the time I posted that video, I was actually traveling for work. And it was about all I could do to make it to meetings and uh, travel and, uh, and go to sleep at night. What happened was the Monday I flew out, October 22nd, uh, I wasn't feeling very well. And I should have known something was up because I didn't feel so well. I had my wife carry me to the airport rather than ride my motorcycle. That should have been a big indicator that something was wrong. So the whole week was uh, was pretty tough. I uh, made it to meetings. I uh, moved very slow through the airport. It was all I could do just to function long enough to get to bed. And then I'd get up the next morning still feeling very bad. Uh, my idea, though, was I would get home, get a good night's sleep in my own bed, and then everything would be fine. Well, when I woke up on October 27th, I was not feeling well, and my wife said, let's go to the ER. And I was thinking, I'm not that bad. I, I don't need the ER. Uh, so we compromised and went to urgent care. And urgent care said, go to the ER. My wife has some wisdom. Should have listened to her in the first place. Anyway, go to the ER, and uh, they quickly admit me because I had atrial fibrillation. And what atrial fibrillation is, is the uh, top part of your heart, the top two chambers, are not uh, functioning in sync with the bottom two chambers. Uh, they tend to uh, just not squeeze completely and out of rhythm, and it's, it's really bad. And that's why I wasn't feeling well, because I didn't have proper blood flow. One of the challenges with atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is that uh, blood clots can form in those chambers that aren't aren't functioning properly. Uh, so they quickly got me uh, into the hospital, and they got me on blood thinners, and monitored my heart, and just uh, overall watched me pretty well. They put me on a lot of different medications, uh, and I was in the hospital for about four days. And when they released me, my heart was doing well. I wasn't um, AFib. Uh, they got me off of out of AFib using some medication, uh, and they sent me to a home with uh, with a fever, and uh, they noticed there was a spot on my liver, but they said neither one of them was much. I just go home, I would get better. So home I went, uh, but I was on so many beta blockers, I was not functioning properly. I couldn't think straight. It was it was bad. Uh, so after a week, I think it was about a week on that, uh, I went back to the doctors, my primary care. And uh, he was able to reduce my medicine enough for me to, uh, to realize what was going on. And what was going on was I had a fever uh, continually since I got out of the hospital. And my fever was running 103, 104. So that went on for a couple weeks um, before uh, my wife got a little concerned. Um, she got concerned because it was like the second or third time I had some uh, shivers. And these shivers are like tremors, uncontrollable tremors. Uh, I can't, uh, I can't seem to stop them no matter how warm. I mean, I was, I was putting blankets in my mouth to keep my teeth from, from chattering together. And it was bad. She got concerned, called a doctor, an uh, on-call doctor, and that doctor said, get him to the ER. So off we go to the ER. It's, I don't know, 11, 11.30 at night. Uh, we, we get there, they take my vitals, and they take me right in. Uh, I've been told if you go to the ER, and, uh, and you don't have to wait very long, it's, it's serious. So both of these times, I didn't have much of a wait. They just brought me right in. And in the ER, the doctor says, you're a sick man. You're a sick man. I, I didn't really know what that meant at the time, um, but uh, he put me on some strong antibiotics. Uh, I spent the next uh, 48 hours in the, uh, in the ICU, um, thinking, oh, I'm just, I'm just here because they can, uh, administer some medicine here that they can't elsewhere. That's kind of what they told me. They didn't really tell me uh, that it was uh, sepsis. I was in a septic shock and uh, just on the verge of uh, organ failure. Uh, what happens with uh, septic shock is your blood pressure drops uh, dangerously low so that there's not enough blood getting to your organs and eventually they, they fail. Uh, so I probably got there just in the nick of time. Uh, so two days in the ICU and then another six days on the uh, cardiac ward. Uh, so it's a total of 10 days in the cardiac ward. Um, so I was there for a while. They uh, kept me on a heart monitoring system. Uh, they drained the uh, abscess on the liver 
that was where my sepsis was, was originating, was an infection on the liver uh, spread throughout the system. Uh, that's what sepsis is, is a systemic infection. So I was on strong antibiotics, IV antibiotics. As a matter of fact, I left the hospital uh, with what's called a PICC line. And the PICC line, P-I-C-C, uh, I forget exactly what it stands for, but basically they, they put this line in one of your veins. Uh, they entered in uh, mine, they entered in here in the arm, and they went up and around and near the heart. Um, so that way they hook up the, the IV pump and it goes basically right by the heart. And then the, the antibiotics are able to get everywhere quite quickly. So I had, uh, I had the IV pump for, uh, for about three weeks. I got it out, <clears throat> excuse me, a few days after I was supposed to start back work on the, uh, I believe it was the 20th of December. Uh, it was removed. And I say supposed to go back to work because there's a, a lot of complications there. I lost my job along the way. On the December 10th, I was notified that, uh, that I was terminated. And I was supposed to return back to work on the 17th. Um, I was still not feeling well that week, the week of the 10th. Um, so I wasn't able to do a whole lot about it. Um, the week of the 17th, I started feeling better. Started looking for stuff. Couldn't interview because I had this IV pump attached to me, this pick line sticking out my arm. Uh, so it was removed on the 20th, and then on the 21st I interviewed, and uh, I found something I've been been thinking about doing. Uh, knew it didn't pay well. I uh, thought I would like to try it out, and I've been trying it out, uh, and that's uh, selling cars. Uh, a few reasons why I'm doing it. Again, like I said, wanted to try it out, wanted to try out sales, uh, but then also I know there's not really any senior engineering jobs available until about March. March, April, sometime around the, the early springtime. I don't know why, that's just the way the, the trends have been. And that's what I'm finding as I've been looking, I can't find a senior engineer job. So I've been selling cars, and that's been taking up a lot of time with the training and learning and the growing and developing. Um, so I haven't had time to work on the videos. Uh, things are settling down a little bit there in the car lot, so I have a little more time now to focus on Focus on creating videos for you. Uh, hopefully you understand uh, what's been taking my time away. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to, to get more videos out like I had been. So anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. A lot more content on the way uh, as the weather changes. That's another problem I've had. As I've gotten stronger, uh, able to ride again, the weather has been bad. Uh, so like today, today I would love to be out there riding, uh, videoing, uh, more adventures, seeing new sites, um, but the weather's not cooperating for me. Uh, here in the Pacific Northwest, we don't get a lot of snow, uh, but we have a good bit today. So enough to keep me off my bike, um, but I'm making videos. Hopefully you enjoy this. Again, please like and subscribe. Um, you can follow me on uh, Facebook and Twitter as well. Uh, I put most of my content currently right here on YouTube. Anyway, thank you so much. 